Quebec Premier Francois Legault says his province is at capacity and asylum seekers should be sent elsewhere. Premier Legault wrote to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau this weekend saying asylum seekers entering Quebec through the irregular border crossing on Roxham Road should be redirected to other provinces. He echoed that message in a letter published today in the Globe and Mail. According to Legault, the number of migrant crossings in his province exploded last year to about 39,000. In Ottawa this afternoon, the official opposition says the border crossing should be closed entirely. Conservatives are calling for the Prime Minister to implement a plan to close the Roxham Road crossing within 30 days from now. Merci beaucoup. Sean Fraser is Canada's Minister of Immigration and Refugees. Minister Fraser, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'd like to start with something Premier Legault has said in his letter to the Prime Minister, saying the Prime Minister needs to send the message loud and clear not to come to Roxham Road anymore. Is your government prepared to send that message? Uh, look, David, before I address your question, let me just extend my congratulations on the uh, the new gig as an East Coaster. We're very proud to see you representing uh, the national broadcast from uh, from the East Coast here. Um, to your question, uh, we're working very hard uh, to uh, work with the province of Quebec uh, to make sure that we're accommodating their concerns. Uh, we do have domestic and legal international obligation once, when it comes to uh, providing the ability for people to make and have fairly considered a, a claim for asylum in Canada. Uh, but the Premier does uh, raise some, some legitimate concerns around the unique pressures that Quebec is facing. We're working very hard to offset some of the costs, but as importantly, uh, to treat this like a national concern. We're working with communities across the country in different provinces that have the capacity to uh, temporarily we have uh, asylum claimants live in their communities uh, to ensure that we're not uh, having too much pressure on any one region in Canada. Uh, this is something that's very serious in Quebec, and it needs to be taken seriously by everyone in Canada. So we're working hard with other provinces and communities to transport those who are willing to go to other parts of Canada as they wait for their asylum claim to be processed as part of the solution going forward. Right, but, but just back to the original question, that line in Premier Legault's letter that the Prime Minister needs to send this message internationally to stop coming to Roxham Road. I, I appreciate your developing contingencies to deal with what happens once people get here, but what about sending that message as Premier Legault is requesting? Uh, we always want to promote regular migration pathways. We want to have uh, controlled borders, but open doors for those who qualify for our programs or who are in need of Canada's protection. As a result of the legal obligations on the government, it's of course not as simple as saying you shouldn't come here to make an asylum claim, uh, but we are going to be wooing work with the Americans to modernize the Safe Third Country Agreement to help alleviate some of these challenges. As you can appreciate, it may not be uh, as simple as saying simply do this or, or don't do that, but we do want Want to discourage irregular migration, not just at Roxham Road, but as a global pattern of migration that we're seeing, because people are putting themselves in serious danger as a result of the journey that they're undertaking. And we want to work to mitigate against irregular migration patterns, in part by encouraging people who qualify to take part in the regular pathways that remain open to them. So how do you change the safe third country agreement to, to get around this challenge of 39,000 people coming to this border crossing in Quebec in the last year? Because as it stands right now, if they go to a proper regular border crossing, they can be sent back. So they come here so they can come into the country. How do you amend things to stop what's happening at Roxham Road? Uh, so we have to work with our, our partners south of the border. Uh, I've had conversations with our ambassador to the United States as recently as a few days ago. Within the next few weeks, I'll have my next conversation with my American counterpart to discuss this issue amongst uh, potentially other of things. Uh, I'm encouraged, uh, frankly, by the direction that discussions have taken. Uh, I'm uh, uh, firmly of the belief that both the Canadians and Americans are solution-oriented, uh, looking towards moving towards a, a modernized safe third country agreement that still allows for a proper asylum claim, but encourages people to make that claim in the first country where they're safe, uh, not only dealing with uh, official points of entry. Uh, so there's still work to do. Uh, of course, there's regulatory processes that have to play out not just in Canada, but also in the United States. Uh, but as of the last few weeks, I've been very encouraged by the direction that our conversations have been headed. And uh, I, I'm of the belief that in the uh, relatively near term, uh, we're going to be able to move forward with a, uh, a modernized safe third country agreement. But will that be a modernized safe third country agreement that actively discourages this sort of irregular migration? Because there's one thing to promote the regular path, but what about discouraging the irregular one? Or is that even something you see as desirable? 
Uh, well, we, we do uh, believe that irregular migration patterns uh, in Canada and around the world actually uh, present very real dangers to the people who uh, are sometimes forced to flee very vulnerable circumstances. Uh, what we do want to work with uh, partners globally on is to establish uh, frameworks that allow people to uh, provide a safe opportunity for people to make an asylum claim. This is uh, not simply uh, an issue of declaring you uh, should or should not uh, uh, take part in irregular migration. Uh, we have to do the work that uh, encourage people to make those decisions by a opening regular pathways for people who are vulnerable seeking safe haven in a country like Canada, uh, but also working with uh, other partners to establish uh, proper abilities for people to make asylum claims in the first country where they're safe to do so. Uh, this is the kind of thing that happens over many years of work with partners. In fact, Canada has recently uh, been the chair of a uh, group of supporting countries for uh, the promotion of regular migration pathways through right. Central and South America. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into these things, uh, but I, I'm confident that uh, going forward, we're going to both encourage regular migration and discourage people from making the often dangerous decision to cross irregularly. If you read the letter, though, from Premier Legault, which I'm sure you have, I just don't know everyone at home has seen it. He, he says schools and processing staff, they are completely overwhelmed by this influx, that the people available to help is limited, the number seeking asylum seemingly unlimited. So how do you get a handle on this if Roxham Road continues to be a clear path into Canada? Well, I, I think part of it is that we do have to uh, address the situation at, at Roxham Road through a modernized state third country agreement that will create opportunities for people to make uh, certain kinds of asylum claims where they're safe. And there will be certain exceptions, of course, as there are today, uh, for people who are making asylum claims in Canada to be reunited with family who are here, for example. Uh, but the, the Premier is, is right in, in one particular regard. Uh, there is immense pressure uh, facing services being provided by the province of Quebec. Uh, we're working with them. I recently met with my uh, provincial counterpart in Quebec to hear her concerns about the costs that they're incurring, but not just the cost, but the inability, regardless of what financial support may come, to continue to uh, host such a significant number of people. Uh, that's why we're working very hard with pr uh, provinces across the country and communities that may have the capacity to temporarily provide accommodations uh, to some of these individuals. And at the same time, we're working to develop an inventory of skills to share with employers who might be uh, able to provide a, an opportunity for someone who will actually help provide labor during during a labor shortage co uh, economic context. Okay, th th that's where uh, I wanted to go next, because on that point, Premier Legault makes the point that it can take up to two years for some people to get work permits uh, processed and get approval to work in Canada. I mean, can you work to speed that up? Will you work to speed that up? Yeah, thanks for the question. And in fact, we have, over the last number of months, we made a, a, a policy change uh, to uh, use a lot more, uh, essentially, digital technology in the immigration system uh, to provide work permits to people who crossed irregularly uh, in, uh, in their quest to seek asylum. Uh, as it stands now for new applications, the vast majority of people are having uh, work permits issued within a matter of, uh, of, of five to seven days. Um, the reality is there are still some legacy applications that came through uh, uh, in a different way before we made this change that will take some time to get through. But by freeing up that extra processing capacity by automating some of the process, we're able to speed up the process for people who've been in the system now. So for new applications, I'm not worried that this is a, a, a serious challenge because we've seen the real data uh, significantly improved. Uh, but we do have to continue to put our processing resources not only towards uh, work permits for asylum seekers, uh, but continue to bring processing times down across the immigration system. Uh, but I've been very uh, pleased with the progress we've seen when it comes to the issuance of work permits in a timely way uh, as of the last few months. So, Minister, what's the timeline on changes and modernization of the Safe Third Country Agreement? I know President Biden is coming here at some point in, in March. Will it coincide with his trip here? Is it longer than that? I mean, when can you tell people you're going to have some sort of a plan to deal with the challenges at the border? Um, look, David, uh, we don't have an announcement uh, to, to make on your uh, your broadcast today, I'm afraid. Uh, but uh, the reality of the situation is there's still some work left to do. Uh, I will be meeting uh, with my uh, American counterpart over the next few weeks. Uh, but there are regulatory processes that need to take place to finalize uh, changes to a bilateral agreement with our largest and, and most important trading partner, the United States. 
Um, there is some work that, that remains uh, ahead. I've been very encouraged by the nature of the conversation over the last number of weeks in particular. Um, we don't have a, a, a date uh, scheduled for, uh, for news on this particular piece uh, because we want to make sure we actually do the work and respect the nature of the conversations with our, our, our partner in the United States uh, before we step out and start uh, making announcements that may be premature, given the fact that there, there is work that remains. Okay. Sean Frazier, thanks for your time tonight. A pleasure as always. Thank you so much. And congratulations again, David.